So before any of the quality improvement work, we had um, a very large team and very large numbers of patients within that team. And for me as team manager, there would be some names that I was quite familiar with, but for other people, I didn't really know or understand what their needs were. So by breaking down a large team into smaller teams, it's enabled us as a leadership team now to know the narrative and the patient journey for every patient that's within the team. Working towards cells, um, that was a challenge in itself to work out what a cell should look like, uh, who are the members of the cell, how does the cell function, who is the cell lead and what their responsibilities are. And to some extent that's been trial and error. There have been some people that volunteered for cell lead um, and other people that we could recognise that they would have the potential um, to have the leadership skills required for that. In doing this, we introduced a morning huddle. And what the morning huddle is, is, is allows the care coordinators to focus on the previous 24 hours. And what they do is they will feed back and tell the leadership team, um, the supercell, what their experience was in the last 24 hours. The main aim is for us to identify patients for whom we're stuck. Because if we're stuck, we have a problem. And our job is to get care coordinators and therefore patients unstuck. So that was the premise of why we introduced the huddles. Additionally, we added things like um, problems that we anticipated during the day. So we could talk about staffing problems or we could start to talk about things such as performance, the team performance. And that was also added to the functionality of the, of the cell in the morning huddle. And it's good how people support each other, I think, in the little smaller groups in the cells um, and sort of just covering if people have got different things you know to do whether it's supporting people at court or whether it's different appointments. Actually having your psychologists and your, your psychiatrists and other team members to sort of bounce ideas off as to where what we do with this person or has anybody else had a similar situation that they've dealt with in the past so it's about sharing and learning as well and, and supporting each other within in the huddles. There's a huddle at, at 9 o'clock until 9.15, then we start at 9.15. But each team kind of listens to each other because we're quite a small team. So we have the benefit of knowing what's going on in, in the other huddle as well. Timing has been um, something that we've needed to exper experiment with, of how long the huddles last, what the format of the huddle is, um, whether there's a set agenda, um, whether it has some flexibility. We've also had to look at making sure that the huddles start on time and finish on time and that everybody um, sticks to the huddle agreement of giving everybody um, sufficient time to speak, uh, recognising that there may be alternative points of view, um, equal opinions about areas of difficulty, but also recognising that people need encouragement and support and uh, praise for doing a good job, as well as flagging up when there are difficulties. I think we now have a model which we feel as a team is beneficial, and certainly that's the feedback we're getting from team members. I think on reflection, the thing that really helped us that we gave people time scales, so people knew, OK, we are going to move towards this way of work and this is how we're going to do it. There was um, a clear cut-off where we had to implement it by a certain point, but we started the conversations way before that so that people knew what it was going to look like. Initially we were quite apprehensive about it. We thought it was just going to be one of these things that we were forced into doing so there would be boxes ticked somewhere out there. Um, and the team came along and introduced us to it and we had the chance to practice. Um, I think you don't see the full benefit until it's it's up and running. You feel more relaxed um, talking to each other. Yeah, there's been some ups and downs, most definitely. But I think it's just about having a positive attitude, believing in your staff, giving people responsibility, um, giving people roles so that they can feel good about their work when they go home. So the Visual Control Board is a really useful, um, I suppose, a simple tool, but a really useful tool to keep everybody up to date with where they're at um, and on sort of on target and to make sure that things happen when they happen. So it's actually, I suppose, an aid memoir so that anything that's, that's sort of discussed we're not going to lose at all. So it's a way of escalating problems sort of further up the chain. Um, and for us to be aware of uh, and it's also a way of how they communicate as a, um, a huddle or a, a cell between all of them in the cell. We've needed to adjust and amend because um, every so often you recognise that there's some part of the information that isn't easy to get at at a glance 
and so um, ways of refining how that uh, visual control is being used. There's a tendency to have a lot of visual work but actually not uh, revisit how effective those visual controls are in trying to do the job that they were set up to do. Sometimes we, we revisited that again because some of the information was negative which meant team members were going, oh goodness me, <laughs> that. So we've actually again thought about what we're going to get up on there reinforces what's going on right but also allows us to keep on top of everything that we need to. We also have sometimes situations where we've asked for a specific test from the acute hospital which can maybe take three or four months before we can actually get those tests done and we keep a check of those on the board as well so we know when we've sent it and we make sure that we check up on a weekly or fortnightly basis to make sure that that person doesn't slip through any holes at all and um, hopefully we've got a tight rein on what's going on with the patients. The teams themselves have found it really supportive being in that sort of environment because lots of different people are in that huddle discussing people. If people are stuck people have said oh come out and review that person um, and that's been really good to get somebody else's point of view, sometimes to problem solve, sometimes to look at social issues or psychological issues. It certainly made my job easy because I've got some more support, I've got access to people. We talk about the next steps, so everybody knows what's happening, the patient knows what's happening. If there was a member of staff on sick, we could find out, we would know what was going to be happening at the next visit with that patient. I think the the biggest improvement that we've seen is staff morale. Um, they say that they feel more supported. Um, it's a team approach. They don't feel alone with that high um, patient caseload. And as such, we've got patients that um, were stuck in service who've now been discharged from services. So caseloads have come down and reduced. Changing the configuration of the team has been really helpful because it, I guess rather than thinking of a caseload of 500 people, we can now break that down into much smaller caseloads, which makes it, which I guess makes our task feel less overwhelming. I think it helps all of us have a sense of team working out, uh, over and above our own individual caseloads, and then that feeds into opportunities for joint working or sharing of ideas. So it has brought the team together to work more um, cohesively. Um, for a seamless service to the patients really. Well I guess it makes every interaction with the patient purposeful, we know what we're doing, we know why we're doing it, we know what each other's doing. A lot of this is about keeping momentum but also making sure that what we do is actually going to benefit the patient um, and they have a sense of forward progression. So all of the processes now I think are well and truly embedded within the team um, and I think people generally like them. I think it is a helpful way of, of, um, of monitoring what we do, why we do it and, and who's in service and, and it helps people to feel safe.